very warm welcome to all of you. I'm very excited to have by my side Zarifa Ghaffari. Zarifa um, was the youngest and one of the few female mayors in Afghanistan, in Vardak province. Um, she got elected in 2018 and held her post until 2021. Um, now she is in between Germany and Afghanistan and I'm really so excited to have you here. Thank you so much. We will obviously talk a little bit about that time in 2021, but um, the two of us decided that we will talk about another time, which is February 2022, when you actually went back to Afghanistan. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you saw there. Thank you so much. Uh, really pleased to be here and once again uh, be part of raising in awareness as well uh, tension and an notice around a country totally forgotten by everyone, not only politicians, but the media and people as well called Afghanistan nowadays. Uh, definitely, it, it has been a uh, very, very dis difficult and uh, tough decision to return back especially just few months after Taliban's returning back to power. But still it was, you know, uh, the only reason which uh, drove me in again was, uh, if I am not doing it, then whom, you know? Uh, and then more importantly, it's about uh, changes that needs to come from within the country. And uh, and then looking at to the lives of all legendaries and then past decades of, of international community and the world, uh, like Nelson Mandela, like Gandhi, and all these people who, who sacrificed their lives to achieve good things for their people and their nation and countries. So that was something that was needed to go back in. And when I, when I've been there, definitely, that time the situation was so hopeful. It, it was still like not this much hard. There were still women in public. There were still women traveling in and out. There were still, you know, the universities got open 26th February, the same day I reached Kabul. And uh, there was discussions that in March schools will be also open for girls. But then suddenly everything shift, shifted from Feb to March and, the, and from that March until now, day by day restrictions and everything just shutting down. I think that's, a, that's one of the remarkable things because like you were stressing uh, the attention uh, in the West sort of ended in 2021 with the so-called fall of, of Kabul into the hands of the Taliban. And I think your insight is very valuable to see that there was a deterioration even from, that, from there. And in 2022, actually, things were getting worse. For example, um, as a mayor, you opened a couple of schools for girls. Also in, in your uh, province, you opened a marketplace for women for them to um, find work there. And when you returned, what were you finding of all these achievements? Unfortunately, not only my achievements, every achievement made last 20 years uh, have been vanished, especially by women and from women uh, of that country. Unfortunately, there was nothing the same uh, especially in my city where I was working as male, I drove uh, by the city and I was just looking at all these shops and, and, and the market and everything. None of them were exactly what I left behind myself. So uh, definitely, especially in case of women, uh, you know, uh, there was, especially that in particular, Feb, uh, 22, 
It was a tension, a big amount of tension, a big amount of fear, uh, a society, you know, where mostly in an, uh, previous months of, before the fall, you could easily get men and women all walking out in evenings to the restaurants, to shops, to markets, to ice cream shops, you know. And the families, that streets were amazingly empty. The, the, the silence uh, all over the city. So I, I seen a very different country, a very different city where I was working and then a very different city where I have been born in and I lived my entire life uh, and I and this was this was again the you know refreshing that same trauma trauma in me uh, that I I left it in August 21 it was the same returning back to me and I, I feel like once again, because I've been there and I, I understood what is it like, so that was really terrible. And uh, hats off to all those women who are still living there, who are still not giving up. At least uh, I, I, I clearly say and I dare to say that Afghanistan is the only country around the world where if you want to be punished as a woman, your gender is enough to be punished for. Um, that is, yeah, that is truly, truly the case. I think one thing that you also stressed and that I find very interesting is that in, at, on the one hand you say that history sort of repeats itself. At the same time, you, um, you stress a lot of times that this particular generation of women that we are seeing now, they still resist, they still resist. And the second um, most striking thing to me is that they get support from Af Afghan men. How do you explain it? Um, definitely, it's been decades of conflicts in Afghanistan. Some people call it just four or five decades of conflict, but I call it, it's. Uh, but I clearly uh, say it, it's, it's uh, 100 years of conflict in Afghanistan since the, uh, since the change of, since the time of King uh, Ghazi Amanullah Khan, the British Empire until now, then the Soviet and all the conflicts. And all during these conflicts, unfortunately, the victims of every change, every conflict, every bad politics, policies, anything, nationally and internationally, it's been women of that country. And, uh, the, the, and then when it's about something is gonna happen in good way, they are the only one that will never have their opinion on table because no one give them that chance. So looking at that point and then looking at how amazingly still they stand up, they still not giving up, especially the new generation. Generation of 20 years, past 20 years of Afghanistan, that I am also one of them. I was six years old when the uh, uh, American and NATO uh, came to Afghanistan and the new government formed. So wh whoever I am, it's because of the last 20 years of, of efforts and achievements. So I feel for us, it's been, incredible journey, but why I feel the reason that we are still not giving up, my generation is not giving up, it's because Afghanistan all these 20 years is like, we always see it like a house being built by 20 years of efforts, you know, furnished, colored, and everything. And then at the end of this all process, you are at the ground floor and you are just standing there to watch up, to look around, and like to find what is still missing, to fix things. But then suddenly you realize that every floor of this building, you know, uh, just broke down. And then at the end, you feel like if I'm not going out, you know, I will also be killed and with my all loved ones. So you leave everything back and you just, you know, step out of it. So that's what we have been through. Afghanistan, 
we as as a generation of humans when we were born we had no word we were just like you know just born on somewhere but then 20 years we started building our world and then we witnessed how amazingly drawn up so i feel that's why we we don't give up and we believe that this is the only way you know to resist uh, if i don't want my girl to go through the same pain i went to I need to stand for everything now myself. And if I want to look at my eyes, my daughter's eyes in future and tell her that, you know, whoever she is and whatever she is enjoying the rights inside that country, Afghanistan, uh, it's because women, including his mo her mom, have been fought for these all. So that needs a courage, and that courage only comes out of the efforts that you pay. So that's the thing, and then looking, uh, knowing that how gratefully men are supporting women, that's also something uh, I feel it's also because of the generational change in that country. Uh, I wish men have been uh, doing this a, a little bit earlier, maybe previous decades, but still, uh, we are hopeful, uh, while I don't feel it's enough. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we, we have been through all the conflicts because of the same main. So if some of them are supporting us, it's good, but I feel it's, it's not enough. We need more of them. Of course, yeah, congratulations. You're also expect expecting a, a daughter. Congratulations on that. Maybe you can stress it a little bit more or explain it a little bit more, highlight what are these aspects when you look at your own life and you decided even to become a politician in a country where even before 2021 there were rarely female representatives. Um, what were these conditions that helped you, what were also the triggers for you in your life, could you explain it for your generation of women that could explain also this, this tremendous amount of resistance these days? Uh, for me, I, I believe understanding and knowledge of uh, my country and the need of uh, changes into the situation, the need of how important it is to women, like, you know, uh, stand up because Afghanistan is one of the countries that sell more than 70% of women population are uneducated. Sell, uh, if we had four, three or four ministers in cabinet, it was just uh, symbolic. We had like 23 or 27, 25 percent of uh, parliamentary uh, women in, in parliament, but that was also something that were like, you know, just uh, to, uh, to show and symbolic. And we needed to, it was a good start, but we needed to make it something so uh, perfect and so fine, so it's, it's not symbolic anymore, and, and it's really the the need of the society, uh, and then, uh, something which answers the needs of society. So for that, it was important to, you know, if you understand it, then you have to start it. You know, uh, I, I understood this, and then uh, I started. And then, then uh, the conflict of Afghanistan, I, I feel like it was important to um, generations, the new generation, the educated ones, to raise up because in 2001, forming new government in Afghanistan, it was the lack of uh, new faces, uh, people, educated, talented young generation. That's why, by the help of international community and the and by direct you know, involvement of international community, former previous warlords and, and, and uh, the killers of people became once again the government and the power holders of the country. So this was needed to change. That needed to change. So I was, uh, and, and that's why I started working and I, uh, I feel if I did anything good, it was just, you know, uh, learning about my country, knowing it, and then doing what was right for the moment. And uh, 
yeah, uh, it's so important overall to, uh, to, to keep it the same way. Uh, but looking at today's Afghanistan once again, I feel we have been once again 100 years back, pushed, we have been pushed 100 years back again, and uh, once again, millions of girls are not going to school. Once again, millions of women are just suffering their life. Uh, they, they're, Afghanistan is the only one country around the world where education for girl child is clearly uh, announced prohibited clearly banned. If you're just 13 years old girl, you're not allowed to go to school. Afghanistan is only one country around the world where women are allowed to sell their body parts, their children, their household, their anything, but not to work and feed their children. Millions of widows live in that country, and all of them are suffering now. And, these, and, and then like these all are coming together you know, uh, uh, I feel it's a, uh, it's still just, we still don't lose hope, we still resist, because I feel it's so important, you know. Yeah. That's, the only, that's the only thing to, to do. Yeah, and I think this, uh, this issue of education of girls and women is at the heart of what you're doing as well. Um, and I am wondering, how do you explain it to you why it, this is attacked so much and we see it also not only in Afghanistan we see it in Iran as well that schoolgirls are attacked and it's a it's a almost yeah a common principle to prohibit the education of women how do you explain it to you why uh, you as an educated woman <clears throat> are supposedly a threat to what uh, trying to be a little bit frank on this uh, not a little bit, a bit more, like clearly frank on this. Unfortunately, the world we live, it is itself male-dominated world. And then countries like Afghanistan, it is a clearly male-dominated country. And in such a country where the conflict comes from all policies, politics, games, and then businesses, and everything of main. And then if there is something good, or maybe peace, that's also same main who years ago were killing each other, will come around a table and make peace with each other, asking no woman in the middle. In countries and con and then in societies like this, it's, it's really hard for the same men in power to let the woman, because they know we women, we are not, like at least in Afghanistan, women of Afghanistan, they are not Taliban, they are not members of Daesh or ISIK, they were not member of Mujahideen and warlords, they were none of these all, none, no part of these all conflicts to that country. So if they give any chance to these women, they know they can, they can be beautifully part of great leadership for the country. And past 20 years is a clear example of it. 30% of national budget of Afghanistan was because of uh, uh, public engagement and especially business engagement of women in, in the country. So they knew and they know that if they, there was the even woman, a, there was sorry there was even a report just recently I wanted to mention it that the the economic recovery for Afghanistan will not happen unless women are yeah are women are being 50 back in the workforce more yeah. near about more than fifty percent uh, if not more than at least fifty percent of Afghan population they are women so if they are you know educated if they are starting leading their own lives and their communities, then I don't believe anyone will believe the same male leaders anymore. So I feel like it's just the stress and fear of that. And then uh, the basic one is, I feel, if a mother is educated, she will never let the child to be a traitor, to be a terrorist, to be a, 
a person involved of conflict or maybe a person give birth of con to conflicts. So uh, if mothers are educated, if women are educated, the machine of producing more terrorism, horror, war, and conflict will be stopped in countries like Afghanistan. So I feel that's the two basic reasons. Uh, and both of them are, again, uh, same main thing, and I wish uh, by, by raising more educated girls to the society, we can fix this maybe after two, three more generations. Does this make you hopeful? Uh, definitely. That's the only thing we, 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 we have it. Like, being hopeful is the only, uh, the only option uh, for us now. Uh, because if we, can't, if we are not hopeful, if we can't keep this uh, hope, of maybe let's uh, think that maybe next generations everything will be fine. There is no other option, you know. We already lived all alone. We are fighting all alone. Afghan women, we are all fighting all alone. The gun which is being used to shut Afghan women's voice, the power which is being used to stop our voices, to stop our efforts to demolish, to vanish our, our personalities, the power that the Taliban are having nowadays in Afghanistan, it's all given to them by same Western community. The guns they use, the power they use, the money, the dollar they use every day, it's all these Western thing. Entire, the billions of dollars, billions of dollars of weapon, they have control over it. It's all NATO thing. The millions of dollars every week, $40 million goes into the Taliban. And there is a clear report by Seagar out that every cent is going to help Talib organization and Talib administration. These all like, you know, when you know this, that that's happening to me because of, you know, entire world then we, we need to be just hopeful ourselves and fight it. While we know we are alone, doesn't matter. Uh, uh, especially when we came to a, a spot where we know there's no other option and we feel like, you know, it's important to fight, we are fighting it. Doesn't matter how long it takes, doesn't matter how many more generations and lives and everything, but what really is important that we will not only fight it now, but we will not forget and forgive in future as well. If we win this war today, trust me, no Afghan woman will be there. Not only Afghan woman, and I feel like no Afghan, entire community, Afghan population, 35, 40 millions of people will never start believing the word anymore for any next time of their lives or maybe the generation. Because we know how tough it is to fight it now and just being alone. But then when we want it, then I feel like that's also something which we have to celebrate it ourselves, not with the world. Maybe as a last question, do you recognize, um, like I think the message was clear, but do you recognize the difficulty for the West, Western institutions, Western organizations and governments, how to help civil society these days in Afghanistan, thinking about that it's, it will feed into the Taliban rule, it will feed into the system and these millions that you were mentioning? First of all, whatever is happening in Afghanistan, it never came out of like a sky, you know. It was something planned by same international community signing a clear deal with the tourist organization and bringing them like a bomb and blowing it on my head. That was nothing just coming out of the sky. That's first thing. Secondly, when we are talking about getting back to humanitarian assistance and blah, blah, we have so many more ways to do that without supporting sending 50 millions of dollars each and every week to Taleb organization by the name of humanitarian assistance. We have women, on, women uh, organizations on ground. We have women activists on ground. It's, it's really amazing. While you know that UN is active, United Nations has an active mission in Afghanistan. Despite that, 
tens of women are arrested by Taliban. Despite that, women are that the life of women are full of distractions. Despite that, dozens of military soldiers are being tortured and killed, and then you know, dozens of people are missing. There is no life for people left in that country. And then when you ask them to help, they will just bring out, if we do any more restriction, we will lose control over humanitarian aid. And when you look at humanitarian aid, it's, it's just going directly to the Taliban, not to local people. It's the same drama all 20 years happened. So I feel like it's so important that we, we start, uh, you know, uh, letting Afghan people lead themselves, in particular women, because the, the, the victims of the conflicts are women, but, uh, but, but when we are talking about helping back the country, that already always starts from the same women who have been victims of it. Thank you so much, Sarif Agafari. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Azul.